Now at 5.30, Lexington police are investigating a deadly crash this morning off Georgetown Road. We'll have the latest in this developing story. Also on WKYT this morning, the previous owner of two abused dogs has been arrested and charged with animal cruelty. We'll have the latest on the rescued dog's condition. And Lexington police investigating a weekend home invasion. One of these stories in breaking news as it happens coming up on WKYT this morning. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning from your most watched television station, WKYT. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Hard to believe it is the Monday before Christmas. I'm telling you, it's been a nice season though, yeah. so far, you know. And uh, it looks like the weather pattern gets pretty active just in time for the holiday. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris in our first alert weather center. Yeah, and we're looking outside this morning and it's staying pretty dry and calm. But like you were talking about being active, after today, boy, things really, really pick on up with the rain, wind, and also a little snow off toward Christmas Day. Here's uh, currently, though, let's talk about what's going on now. Uh, temperatures are there in the 30s, even a few 40s down south. All in all, it's not a bad start to the morning. On the cool side instead of the cold side. And then as we go toward the afternoon, upper 40s to around 50 degrees. Kind of depends on where you are. Maybe a stray shower or two, but as we go off into the night and into tomorrow, that's when the rain really picks up with those gusty winds. Those gusty winds will be out ahead of this big system we've been talking about for about a week now. And I'll show you what the weather models are showing, the latest data, coming up in just a few minutes. We'll see you in a bit. And we begin with uh, tracking a developing news alert out of Lexington this morning, or out of Harrison County. Uh, just coming in, these details. We're told that a man has been shot and killed there. The Harrison County coroner tells us he was told of the uh, incident around 1 o'clock this morning and that the victim died at Harrison Memorial Hospital. Kentucky State Police tell us they are still on scene of something that happened just before 1 o'clock this morning in Cynthiana on Monroe Lane. We are working to gather more details and we'll update you with the latest information as soon as it becomes available. But again, it appears to be a, a deadly home invasion, the details as we get them. And new this morning, a man is dead after an early morning crash in Lexington. The wreck happened off Georgetown Road just before 3 o'clock this morning. WKYT's Mark Barber is live at the scene with the latest. Mark, can, what can you tell us? Good morning, Bill and Rebecca. In the past 15 minutes, a tow truck company was able to pull that car that was involved in the deadly crash out of a line of trees here. They loaded it onto their truck and took it from the scene. Now, also in the past few minutes, crews brought in this fence that you see over my shoulder here. They were able to patch the hole that was in this damaged fence to keep the horses that were in this pasture from getting out of the field. Now, police say just a few hours ago, a man was killed after his car ran off the road here at the Fayette Scott County line on Georgetown Road. Investigators say the driver of a white Chevy was heading north around 2.45 this morning when he crossed over the median and oncoming traffic. Officers tell us the car smashed through two fences, finally coming to a stop in a line of trees just feet from a house. Officers tell us the driver was thrown from the car and died at the scene. Lexington police called in canines and fire crews to search the area for a passenger, but no one else was found. At this time, they believe the driver was the only person in the car. Investigators tell me the coroner is waiting to talk to family before he re releases a man's identity. Now, police say it is far too early to say if alcohol or speed was a factor. They tell me it could take quite some time to figure out what caused this crash. Live in Lexington, Mark Barry, WKYT. Mark, thank you very much. Some good news for those of you who have been following our story about Lola, an abused Doberman. Lola is doing better, and her owner has been arrested. The state police arrested Ricky G on U.S. 60 around 11 o'clock on Saturday morning, and he is charged with animal cruelty. Police say rescuers found his two Dobermans chained to a pole outside of his Rowan County house last week. One of those dogs later died. Lola is being cared for by the Star Rescue Group, which says... G's charge is not enough. I don't think the maximum penalty for a Class A misdemeanor is really justification for one life and uh, the suffering of the other life, but we just hope that whatever maximum penalty is available will be um, sentenced to. Star needs help paying for Lola's vet bills and food, and they are accepting monetary donations. Well, officers are trying to figure out who fired shots in a Lexington neighborhood. Witnesses on Keys Road heard gunfire around 2.30 Sunday afternoon. They reported seeing a man driving away in a Mercedes. About 15 minutes later, police got a call about a man with a gunshot wound to the leg. That man, police say, isn't giving them information about the shooters. Police did find some bullet holes in a home, but they haven't found any shell casings. 
Officers in Lexington are also investigating a home invasion. Police tell us around 7 Sunday morning, a man with a gunshot wound walked into Good Samaritan Hospital. He told officers that he was at his home on Anniston Drive when a masked man forced his way inside. The man says the intruder shot him. Police have a very limited description of that person. They took the victim over to UK Hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. President Barack Obama says he's considering whether to put North Korea back on a list of countries that sponsor terrorism. The U.S. has linked the reclusive regime to the crippling cyber attack on the Hollywood studio that planned to release a movie about the assassination of the country's dictator. But some in Congress say the president is not moving swiftly enough as North Korea makes more threats this morning. Mark Albert has more from Washington. The sweeping cyber assault on Sony Pictures was the most devastating cyber attack ever on a U.S. business. But President Obama said Sunday it was not an act of war. I think it was an act of cyber vandalism that was very costly, very expensive. We take it very seriously. Uh, we will respond proportionally, as I said. The president's administration has blamed North Korea for the hacking and is weighing how to respond. Late Sunday, North Korea warned it may attack, quote, the White House, the Pentagon, and the whole U.S. mainland, the cesspool of terrorism. Some members of Congress are criticizing President Obama, who is spending the next two weeks in Hawaii, for his response. This was a nation-state attack on the United States, and saying aloha and getting on an airplane going to Hawaii is not the answer that uh, really the world needs, let alone America. The movie that sparked the controversy, The Interview, would have opened this Thursday. Instead, Sony pulled the film after major theater chains decided not to show it, amid threats of violence by the hackers. CEO Michael Linton defended the studio. We have not caved, we have not given in, we have persevered, and we have not backed down. But as of now, there are no plans for its release. Mark Albert for CBS News. Washington. And the U.S. believes that North Korea is using infrastructure and assets in other countries to stage cyber attacks. The administration says it has asked several nations, including China, North Korea's main ally, for help in identifying and disrupting those assets. And a senior administration official has told CBS News that the president's aides are putting together a package of options that may include diplomatic and economic measures. Well, a family is remembering a man kidnapped and murdered in Lexington a year ago. Alex Johnson went missing December 20th of last year. Two weeks later, crews found his body in a barrel on the Kentucky River. Late Saturday night, his family posted a thank you to everyone who prayed and searched for Johnson. Police say Mark Taylor and Timothy Ballard lured Johnson into their car and beat him to death. Taylor is charged with murder and kidnapping Ballard with kidnapping and evidence tampering. Johnson's family is also suing the city, saying police were not properly dispatched after someone made emergency calls. Well, happening today, we've been told the city officials are expected to announce the new police chief for Lexington. Four people have been considered for the job. Mark Barnard, a 28-year veteran of the Lexington Police Department, oversees the Bureau of Investigation. And Lawrence Weathers has been with the department for 25 years. Dwayne Depp also interviewed for the position. He is currently a member of the Kentucky Parole Board and has more than 25 four years of experience in law enforcement. And the final candidate is Terry Wilfong. She recently retired as the police chief in Greenville, South Carolina. The announcement is expected at 10 o'clock this morning from Mayor Jim Gray. The search for a man who went missing this weekend is now over. Sheriff's deputies in Laurel County say someone spotted 71-year-old Michael Salisbury Sunday morning driving his car down the road. They say he was uh, alert and oriented, and deputies issued a golden alert for Salisbury after family reported him missing. He takes various medications, we're told is also a diabetic. Deputies say Salisbury had an argument with his wife and left their home around 3 o'clock on Saturday. Well, hundreds of kids in Powell County lined up outside the Peddler's Auction House Sunday to talk to Santa. After giving old St. Nick their wish list, they got to pick from a room filled with Christmas toys just for them. Organizer Jimmy Cole got the idea for the toy giveaway 15 years ago when a child came to him for help. We had a little boy come up to us. He was telling us that uh, his mom and dad was in jail, and he wanted to know if we could help him get a toy. And I said, sure, we can. And I made myself a promise that there'll never be another kid ever needing a toy that I can help as long as I live. And we've put it together ever since. 
Very, very special. Cole hopes to help more kids next year. I hope he can. It's just not Christmas dinner without a turkey, so a group in Harlan County made sure this weekend that families out of work, coal miners and truck drivers, uh, had a Christmas dinner on their table. The Tri-State Bass Club handed out the 14-pound free birds to more than 100 people. They say the workers are important to them, so they wanted to help out as much as they could. Our community has been hit so hard with layoffs and stuff like that, we figured just a little bit from us giving back to the community through sponsorship to help out on Christmas. This is the club's second year of giving away free turkeys. A Lexington homeowner is lighting up his neighborhood with Christmas spirit. The home on Mount McKinley Way features a computerized Christmas display. The owner asks anyone who visits to bring non perishable food items. He's collecting cans for God's pantry. His goal is to get more than 200 pounds of food. We have a reminder this morning for Lexington drivers. The blasting part of the new Circle Road widening project will impact another road this week. State transportation crews will shut down Alexandria Drive between the Roundabout and Viley Road twice today and twice tomorrow. Blasting is scheduled for 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. both days. Crews are widening New Circle between Versailles Road and Leestown Road. 